You are God's creature, designed for glory. You are not designed for shame. Return it back in Jesus' name. I rebuke the devil. God is a God of mercy. When you understand that God is a God of mercy, you are a creature of intention. God created you intentionally. Get set for a moment of empowerment with your host, Benjamin Beckley. Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song, for he had done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm has gotten him the victory. Psalm 98 verse 1, glory be to God. You shall be triumphant. You shall be victorious in the name of Jesus. May God make you a beneficiary of the marvelous things that he does in the name of Jesus. Welcome to Moment of Empowerment with Benjamin Beckley. And I remain your host, Benjamin Beckley of the Empowerment Center in Arlington, Texas, USA. God bless you so much. Moment of Empowerment is a revelational and prophetic broadcast that is designed to empower you towards taking your rightful place in destiny. There is a place for you to occupy on the earth. God positioned you on the earth to add value to it, to make it better, to generate impute and to command result. However, you need to be empowered in order for you to take your place. And that is the reason why this broadcast is designed to empower you spiritually, mentally, financially, matrimonially, physically, in all areas of life, all around empowerment that will put you in your place of glorification in the precious name of Jesus. Thank you for tuning in to this broadcast today. I really appreciate you sincerely. We appreciate your calls, appreciate your time, your comments, all the messages, your mails. Thank you so much for all your all-round support. May the Lord increase you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord surprise you in the precious name of Jesus. Now, as we get set to connect with power from God's word, I'd like you to invite somebody. I'd like you to tell somebody about this broadcast. Tell them the station you are watching me right now. Let them know that it is time to be empowered. It is time to connect with God's word that will change us and change our world. You know someone anywhere that needs to be lifted. You know someone anywhere that is downcasted, that needs encouragement. You know someone that is sick. You know someone that is passing through turbulence and tough time. Get them on the, on the station right now. Send them a message. Give them a call. Send them the link. Wherever you are, let them connect with the flow of God's power as it comes through his word. And I can tell you, you shall surely be blessed of the Lord in the precious name of Jesus. It is time to be empowered, and God's word is a primary channel for releasing power that moves into the next dimension. And I know that is what you will experience today like never before in the precious name of Jesus. Now, right before I go into God's word today, I'd like to invite you to the Empowerment Center. The Empowerment Center is a non-denominational, multicultural, world-based church of God that is designed and committed to empowering lives towards taking their place in destiny. Our assignment is to ensure that you be all that God wants you to be, enjoy all God that God wants you to enjoy, and at the end, influence and impact your world positively. We are sent on a mission. We are a church on a mission designed to express the love of God to you, wherever you are, whosoever you are, come as you are. God loves you the way you are. We want to express the love of God to you. The information is right on the screen. Call the number for info direction, for prayers, for more information. I look forward to having you in any of our services. Service holds on Sundays, 10 a.m. to 12 noon, and on, on, on Thursdays, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. You shall surely be blessed as you come to any of the service. You need a place where you can be nurtured with the undiluted word of God. You need a place where you can pray and experience the power of God. You need a place where you can experience and walk in love. And I can tell you, that is what the Empowerment Center stands for. I look forward to receiving you this Sunday. I look forward to receiving you any day. Come, let's fellowship together. You need God in your life. And I can tell you, when you come to the Empowerment Center, you surely have 
an encounter with God that will change your circumstances and change your world for better in the precious name of Jesus. Now, today, by the grace of God, I'm going to continue the series of teaching that I started in the last broadcast on Make a Move. And this is going to be the part two. Make a Move. In our last broadcast, we discovered that until you move, nothing moves. Until you move, everything remains the same. There is a move to make to make things to move. There is a move to make to make things work. Until you work on things, everything remains the same. We also discovered that it takes making a move in the direction of God's word to change our world. Do you desire a change in your world? You desire a change in your circumstances, then identify what to do. Discover what move to make. And God's word is a book of discovery. When you get into God's word, you discover yourself, number one. You discover God, number two. You discover his promise and his possession for your life, number three. And when you discover this, you need to make a move in the direction of God's word that you have discovered in order to experience a change in your world. That's why Jesus said, thou shalt know the truth, talking about God's word, because thy word is truth, and the truth shall set you free. So the truth will turn circumstances around for you. In the last broadcast, we also saw from our anchor text that God's word came out by the prophet that by this time tomorrow, everything that has been scarce will become surplus. But suddenly, we saw within the picture four leprous men that broke out of limitation. I said they broke out of societal limitation. The society does not accept them because they are leprous men. But yet, in the midst of the societal limitation, they made a move to advance their life. Number two, they broke out of physical limitation. They had physical limitation because when you are leprous, when you are leprous, certain things are not working again in your life. Your hands are weak. Everything is, is touched. Everything is tampered with. But even in the state of their physical limitation, they made a move. And I did say, and I'm challenging somebody watching me right now, maybe you have been giving excuses that, you know, it's not time, the circumstances are not favorable, you are this, you don't have a father, or because you are living alone, or because you don't have money. There is a move to make. When you make a move, in despite your limitation, you break the limitation. When they made a move, they step into harvest that God has propositioned for everyone. Now, look at one of the funniest things about that scripture is that even in their leprosy, they knew what was good. The fact that they were physically leprous does not mean they are mentally leprous. Uh, come on now. You see, one of the greatest problems a man can have is to be mentally defeated. When you have mental deficiency, you may not be able to access everything that is available. I do say you are not defeated in life until you are mentally defeated. You are not defeated until you accept defeat within. So they never allowed their leprosy to serve as an excuse for their lifting. I'm saying this to somebody because some of the reasons why people don't make moves in life is because of excuse. There will always be excuses. There will never be a favorable time. Now is the time. People don't make moves because of procrastination. They procrastinate. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. No, there is no better tomorrow. Do it now. Do it now. Make the change now. You've got to make a move when it is relevant. And I know one of the reasons why people don't make a move is because of fear. 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 If I do it, will it work? Do it. It will work. Your fear is what has incapacitated you. You are more than this. You can do it. You have what it takes to do it. You have what it takes to make the move to be better. But your fear can hold you down. But this leprous man, four of them, broke loose of their limitation and they stepped into their promotion. That will be your testimony. I command your limitations broken. In the name of this, whatever has limited you this far, it is shattered in the precious name of Jesus. Listen to me. So in case you missed that broadcast or you missed that edition, you can watch a rebroadcast on our website, uh, www.worldrevival.org. Watch a rebroadcast on that website. Just click on Empowerment TV. You will find a rebroadcast. You can watch it any day, any time. You surely will be blessed as you connect with Revelation. Now, understand with me that if you desire 
to move forward in life, then you must be willing to make a move. If you want to move forward in life, you must be willing to make a move. Now, let me share some things with you as it relates to making a move. Number one, to make a move means to take action. To make a move means to shift. When we talk about making a move, it means to change. It means to make things work, to do something in relation to what you want to experience. I want you to know that when you make a move, things will surely move. I want you to understand that it takes making a move to experience steady progress in life. If you desire to experience progress in life steadily, you got to make move steadily. You don't want to be stagnant. When you are stagnant, everything remains in the state of redundancy. If you want to experience progress steadily, you got to make a move. In Genesis chapter 26, verse 12 and 13, Genesis 26 Verse 12 and 13, there was a situation in the land from verse 1, there was famine. Everything was not working. But in verse 12, Bible says, then Isaac sowed in that land. He made a move. The circumstances was not favorable, but he made a move. Isaac sowed in that land and received the same year an hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him because he made a move. When you make a move in the direction of God's word, your world will not remain the same. Verse 13, and the man, talking about Isaac, works great, went forward, grew until he became very great. Steady progress. Why? Because he made a move when no other person was making a move. He made a move when, when it looks as if it's not favorable. God is asking me to tell somebody right now, you, you've been postponing what God told you to do. God has given you an instruction. You know you are the one I'm God, God is talking to you. God has given you an instruction to get something done, to shift something, to change something. But you, you've been postponing it because you're afraid. You don't know what it's going to be. The situation, the circumstance doesn't look favorable. And God is asking me to tell you, make the move. When you make the move, I will move on your behalf. When you make that positive move, I will cause things to move to your favor. I pray for you today. As you pray this, connect with this, you will make relevant progress. In the precious name of Jesus, God will stir up your heart to make relevant moves in the name of Jesus. Listen to me. To make progress in life, there are some moves you must make. To enjoy the best of life, you need to make some moves. I want you to sit down. Discover what moves do I need to make. You want to change your story. What do I need to do? You want to change what is not working. What do I need to do? There is a move to make. And if you don't know what to do, call me right now. Call the number on the screen. By the grace of God, we engage the grace that is upon our life through the realm of the Spirit to guide you right, to counsel you right. Because you don't want to watch things the same and nothing is changing. There is a move to make. Not just a spiritual move. Sometimes there are financial moves to make. Sometimes there are mental moves to make. There are, there are, there are, there are physical moves to make. Maybe you are having financial trouble. Maybe you need to make a move to cut your expenses. Some of us need to make some moves, to make some, some decisions, to sacrifice some things in order to make things work better. There is a move to make to make things work better. Now, let me just share with you some of the moves that you must make in the season if you desire to enjoy the best of life. Just some of them. I just want to share three with you. Moves that you must make in this season if you desire to enjoy the best of life. Number one. You need to make a move to advance and upgrade your life. Wherever you are watching me and whosoever you are, your life can be better than what it is right now. You can be better than wherever you are now. You can be better than whatever results you, can, you are getting now. You can get better results than that. You just need to make a move to advance and to upgrade your life. When you don't upgrade, you remain downgraded. If you are not upgrading yourself in a fast-moving world, you remain downgraded. Many people will no longer be relevant in the years ahead because they are not making moves to advance. To make progress in life, you need to make progressive moves. Make a move to add value to yourself. 
Make a move to better your life. Now, I'm, I'm going to be unveiling this revelation to you from the book of Luke chapter 15, verse 17 to 20, talking about the prodigal son. The Bible told us about a boy that was called the prodigal son. And from his glory, I realized that there are some moves to make to enjoy the best of life. You need to make a move to advance, to upgrade your life. You can do something to your life beyond where you are right now. Some of us, some of us need to upgrade by taking advanced course. You need to upgrade by moving on whatever level you have. Move to the next level. Upgrade your life spiritually. Grow more in God. Upgrade your life in knowledge, know something that you have not known before. Don't let this year just be a waste. Upgrade. Upgrade yourself. Make a decision to add to your life. Add something to your resume. Add something to your journey that will make your life better. Add something to your marriage in, the, in line with God's word that you know is missing there. In Luke chapter 17 from 7, Luke 15 rather, 17 to 20. This boy took all he has from his father's house and he wasted it. But suddenly in verse 17, Bible says when he came to himself, he came to the realization of what he has learned. He said, how many hired servants of my father have bread enough to spare, and I, I perish with hunger. And he arose, verse 20, he came to his father. But when he was yet far away, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. He made a move to upgrade his life. He was eating and dining with swine. But he said, no, there are hired servants in my father's house that they have bread and they even have excess. I need to advance by making a move to enjoy a better life. Somebody is watching me right now. The Spirit of the Lord is standing in your heart to make a move to advance. Make a move to live a better life. Make a move to add value to yourself. If you are a father, make a move to be a good father to your children. If you are a wife, make a move to be a better wife. If you are anything, if you are a child, you are a son, you are a daughter, make a move to bring peace to your parent by advancing your life. Advance spiritually, advance mentally, advance financially. And I know things will not remain for you the same in the precious name of Jesus. I see you making progress. I see you advancing in the precious name of Jesus. Make a move. Number two moves I know you need to make to enjoy the best of life in this season is to make a move to stop what is affecting you negatively. Yes. Make a move to stop what is affecting you negatively. To enjoy the best of God in your life, you need to stop what is bringing you down. You need to stop what is messing up your life. Identify what you need to stop and stop it now. The Bible says concerning this prodigal son, in Luke 15, 17, when he came to himself, he said, how many hired servants of my father have bread? And immediately he made a move, verse 18, I will arise and go to my father. I will, I will go to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against you. I have sinned against heaven and before you. A move to stop what is affecting you negatively. What was that? What was affecting him was the separation between him and his father. He made a move to correct what needs to be corrected. Some people are listening to me and watching me right now. The Spirit of the Lord is tearing up your heart. There is something to stop. There is something to stop if you really want to enjoy the best of God in life. Make a move to identify what is affecting you negatively and stop it. Are you cheating? Make a move to stop it. You, you can. You can do it. You need to make a move to stop fornicating. You need to make a move to stop stealing. Are you involved in drugs? Make a move. You can. You can. Make a move to stop smoking. Make a move to stop living a life that is away from God. It doesn't matter where you are. Make a move to stop giving excuses. Make a move. You can. You can. The capacity to do it is with you. When he came to himself, he realized that, no, I've been wasting my life. Because until you stop what is affecting you negatively, it's only a matter of time if you do not lead to your destruction. You will not be destroyed. Make a move to change, to change what needs to change, to stop what needs to stop. You know what you do. You know the things that are affecting you. You know the things that you do to affect your life. If you don't know, sit down and analyze your journey. Because if you can make a move to stop what you need to stop, I can tell you what does not need to be happening to you will stop in your life. In the precious name of Jesus, I pray for you that in this season, the hand of the Lord will be upon you. Whatever you need to stop, receive grace to stop right 
right now. In the precious name of Jesus, receive grace to stop whatever is affecting you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Oh my goodness, something is happening here. Number three, what moves do you need to make? You need to make a move to come back to God and abide with God. You need to make a move to come back to God and abide with God. When you are far from God, you are far from good. <laughs> when you are far from God, you are far from good. Come on now. Because in him, all good and perfect gifts, they come from him. So to be far from God is to be far from his goodness. When this son left his home, he was far from his father. Then he realized that my problem is the distance. Then he said, no, I arise, I'm going back home. Some of you need to make a move to come back home. There is a father watching me right now. You have eloped out of your marriage. You have left your children. You need to make a move to go back home. You need to make a move to go settle with your wife. Go settle with your husband. You need to make a move to settle with father in heaven. You need to make a move to settle with your father, with your God. Look at what is happening here. You need to make a move to be there for your children. You don't want them to live a wasted life. Make a move to add value to your life. You need to make a move to come back to God. The Bible says when, when he, he came to himself, he said, no, I have to go back home. And when he got back home, his father accepted him. Bible says the father had compassion. God is opening his hand to have compassion on you, no matter how far you have gone. Because when you are far from God, you are far from good. In John chapter 15, verse 4 to 5, Bible Jesus said, Abide in me, and I will abide in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can you also, except you abide in me. Verse 5, I am the vine. You are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him shall bring forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. So by separating yourself from God, you cannot go far. I pray for you that you will, you will receive his hand that is spread and open towards you now wherever you are. Saying, son, come back home. Saying, daughter, come back home. You might have gone far. You might have even left his presence. Maybe you have left the church because of the way you see they are dealing with you. Maybe you have even left the, the presence of God. You have left people that are supposed to be there for you. God is saying come back right now because you need to make a move to be with him. When you make a move to come back to God and to abide with God, you enjoy the best of God. When the prodigal son came back home, the father killed the, the best, the best of what he had. He put upon him a new raiment. He put a new garment upon him. He was celebrated because he made a move. There is a move for you to make. And when you make that move, that move will make you. When you make relevant move, that move will make you. In the beginning of that scripture, he made a move to leave the house. And when he left the house, he was battered, stagnated, frustrated, beaten. But when he made a move to come back home, maybe you have made a mistake. Maybe you have made a move that costed you. God is saying you can still reverse the move. You can make a better move. Make a move to come back home. Make a move to come back to God. Make a move to abide with him. And I know you shall surely be connected and blessed as you come. I'm praying for you right now. And I'm reaching out to you in the name of Jesus. Wherever you are, you are listening to me and watching me right now. That you know you have deserted God. You have left him. You have not even been there at all. You, the spirit is bearing witness within you that God is speaking to you. There is a move for you to make. I want to pray with you right now. You are watching me. You have not accepted the lordship of Jesus over your life. He said, by separating yourself away from me, you can do nothing. He said, come unto me, all that labor and every lady. I will give you rest. He wants to give you rest. He wants to accept you. You may look as if, oh, I'm the worst of all the sinners. No, his mercy covers your sin. His mercy covers your iniquity. His mercy covers your error. No, even if nobody is accepting you, even everybody has rejected you, God said, come back home. God said, come to me right now because he's waiting for you. I want to pray with you. You are saying, God, I want to come back home. You are saying, I want to make a move to come back to him. Make the move right now. Pray this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I am sorry for my sins. I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Save me, Jesus. Write my name in the book of life. Thank you for saving me in Jesus' name. I know if you have prayed that prayer, you are saved. Now, call the number right now on the screen. I want to hear from you. I want to hear from you because as you grow in things of God, you will advance and wants to extend his love to you. Make a move to come back to him. And now that you are coming, you are back, he is accepting you 
and things will work for you. Call in for prayers right now. Whatever the issue, you are confused. You want to make a move, but you are afraid. Call that number on the screen. I'm willing to pray with you. I'm going to pray with you. I'm going to stand there with you. I'm going to declare the counsel of the Lord with you. And you shall surely enjoy the best of God for your life in the precious name of Jesus. It is well with you. Glory, 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 glory be to God. Whatever move you need to make that will move you forward. God will stir up your heart to make it now in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Now, right before I land up on today's broadcast, I'd like to introduce to you my newly published book that is entitled, Command Your Total Deliverance and Liberty. I want to tell you this is a timely book that is designed to empower you for total triumph in life. You need to understand in this book by revelation what deliverance stands for. Who needs deliverance? When do we need deliverance? Why do we need deliverance? And some deep revelation as well as prayer guides that will guide you in connecting with your total liberty and victory. You don't want to miss getting this book. Now, this month, for the love gift of any amount, as we advance the spreading of the word of God all around the continent, I will send you a copy of this book absolutely free. The information is on the screen. Call in right now or go to the website. Call in for call in. Uh, and, and for any of your donation, for any love gift this month, I will send this to you of any amount. I know as you support in advancing this kingdom, you will never, never lack in the precious name of Jesus. The book is also available on Amazon. You can lay hold on it, the ebook and the print version. You will surely be blessed as you read in the name of Jesus. So call the number on the screen right now and someone will be there to attend to you. Let's connect together. Connect with God's blessings and grace in the precious name of Jesus. It is well with you. Now, I want to pray with you. Get the sick on right now. Whatever be the situation, God's hand is going to reach out to you. And I know somebody is asking God for a job. The door is opening right now in the precious name of Jesus. I command every sickness be healed in Jesus' name. I rebuke every cancer. I rebuke high blood pressure in the name of Jesus. That your son is healed now by the power of God in the name of Jesus. I declare breakthrough your way. I declare lifting your way in the name of Jesus. Enter into your promotion in Jesus' precious name. Amen. I know you have a praise report. Call the number right now. Go on the website. Let me hear from you what God has done for you. And we shall glorify his name forever. You can listen to more life-transforming messages and revelation on our 24 hours online radio any day, anytime. The information is on the screen. You can download the Android app. It will be a great blessing to you as you listen to the word of God and to prayer. It is well with you. God bless you. Call in right now. Call for prayers. Call in to offer encouragement. God bless you. Amen. Till I come your way again next time, stay empowered and keep empowering others. God bless you. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Watch us every week at the same time for your moment of empowerment. Visit us online at wordrevival.org or call us at 972-639-1762. Or stop by and see us at 838 Secretary Drive, Arlington, Texas.